Yo guys, what's up? Uh, about three years ago, I took a trip down to the CM Peace Tour, uh, located at Camp Perry, Ohio. Um, it's the uh, Civilian Marksmanship Program. I live in western Pennsylvania, so it was about a three hour drive. Uh, before I went up there, I always wanted an M1 Grand, and I could never really find one, and then I found them at gun shows every now and then, but they were always kind of beat up and the sellers always wanted more money than they were worth so I heard about the CMP program so I went up there to check it out and I got my M1 Grand uh, that was about three years ago it was uh, June of 2010 and they gave me a certificate of authenticity with it and everything it tells me the date when I bought it and all that but uh, this is a special service grade M1 Grand uh, what makes it a special service grade is that all the parts are Springfield, okay? Um, they have different grades of M1s. Here, I'll show you this, not loaded. Okay. They have different grades of rifles. They have like um, rack grade, field grade, service grade, and then this is the uh, special service grade. Um, all the parts are Springfield. This rifle, the barrel is dated 1955, okay? Now the parts are not matching numbers. If the parts were matching numbers, this rifle would be like thousands of dollars. But, um, yeah, it's a special service grade. I got it for, I think, 895. And then the, the grade above this one, uh, I forget what it was called, but I think it was a select service grade or something, I forget. But the barrel on that one was a brand new barrel. So that rifle was $9.95 and it had a brand new barrel. This rifle was $8.95 and it had an original barrel. Um, in the store, that gun was uh, had a higher price, but in the long run, this one's going to be worth more money because it's all original. Okay, a brand new barrel is not going to be worth as much money as an original barrel. Uh, so this rifle, the barrel's dated 1955 and uh, they classify it as a Korean era M1, even though um, that war ended in 53. They still consider it Korean War era. Okay. So everything on this gun is Springfield, except for the uh, stock. It's a reproduction stock. It has the uh, cleaning compartment in the back, and I have a cleaning kit that I got at a gun show. And something they told me when I was down there they said that um, the thing that really wears out the barrel of a rifle is when you clean it with a copper brush. Um, I, I never knew that until they told me, and these guys are like really knowledgeable on this kind of stuff. So I took their word for it, and I went and got myself a nylon brush, which is what they recommend, or a boar snake. But in the cleaning kit, it has a copper brush, and I have that in there just to keep it authentic but I also have the nylon brush that I actually use to clean it. So, on this side of this talk, it has a uh, CMP cartouche. I don't know how well you can see that, but it, there is a cartouche that says CMP. It has like an eagle on it. So that's how you know it's a uh, CMP rifle. Uh, very, very good shape. These rifles really weren't used that much. Um, when you're selecting your rifle, when you go to the store, they give you a little gauge that you borrow, and when you're looking at the rifles, you can put this gauge down the muzzle, and depending on how far it goes down the muzzle, it tells you uh, how much the barrel's been shot. The farther the gauge goes down into the rifle, uh, the higher the number, which means the barrel has been shot more. Uh, I think this one came in at like a, a half or maybe a one, I forget, but it was very good. And also, you have a gauge to test the uh, chamber or the throat and it also came in very good okay um, I think the cheapest ones you can get uh, that are worth getting would be the uh, field grade the field grade I think they started like 475 but they're really hammered up the woods all dented up and cracked and the uh, the gauge is like three and four uh, readings. So you're, you're really better off going with something like this. I know it's a lot of money, but really, for the M1 that you're getting, 
yeah, I think it's a great deal. And some guys out there, they want to have an M1 that was, you know, used in World War II, and that's cool. But for me, I just wanted the rifle. You know, I really didn't care if it was actually used in World War II. Uh, this is the ammo I use. Yeah, you can get this at the CMP store. This is HXP ammo, and this one is dated 1969. Uh, it's pretty reasonable. Uh, it's, it's very good ammo, very accurate. It's very clean burning. Uh, it doesn't dirty your rifle up that much. It's obviously military. I'm not sure uh, how heavy the bullets are. I don't know what the grain is, but it's full metal jacket. It's pretty cool. And uh, you can buy this ammo. They'll ship it to you in like a uh, green ammo can. And uh, depending on what package you get, it either comes loaded in these little clips, or it comes in uh, just boxes, and you got to just put them in the clips yourself. But that's pretty cool. Um, I'd show you how to load it, but I'm not going to load it in the house. I'll do that when I take it to the range. And I haven't shot this thing in about a year. You know, I take really good care of it. Yeah, it's probably my favorite rifle. But the M1 Grand is just a sweet rifle. You know, it's an American classic. It's used in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Some people don't know that, but it was actually used a little bit in Vietnam. Uh, really good sights on it, windage and elevation, peep sights. It's a very accurate rifle. Uh, it's, it's pretty heavy, but it's very comfortable. It's really cool. Uh, there's a bayonet lug right there. And I have a bayonet that I got for it at the CMP's tour. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. But all the parts on it are Springfield which is pretty cool and I think they have like Winchester M1s, H&R M1s, Springfield M1s uh, I can't remember if there's any more that they have um, but yeah this is a uh, reproduction sling it's a canvas sling sometimes when you see these kind of slings they'll be made out of like a nylon and they're kind of shiny and kind of cheap feeling this is a really heavy duty canvas sling that you can get at the CMP's tour I think I paid like twelve dollars for it but it looks really good with the rifle. It's like a nice OD green. It's a beautiful stock too. I love this stock. It's freaking awesome. I was, I was pretty excited when I found it. They had a whole bunch of them too. Uh, they had like, most of the store was filled up with uh, field grade M1 grounds. And then they had maybe about two rows of these. Um, so yeah, you can go up to the CMP store, and pretty much the whole store is filled with M1s. They have a little bit of M1 carbines, uh, some O3 Springfields. Uh, they don't have many of those, though. Most of them are just M1 Grands. And you can just take the whole day and just uh, find the one you want. It's pretty cool. I went there twice. Uh, the first time I went up, I got this one. And the second time I went up, uh, I went up there and my dad got one for him. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Actually, when you go up there, once they have your information and you buy an M1 Grand, you can actually, from home, go on their website and they can ship the rifle to your house because they have your information. Same with the ammo. So that's pretty cool. So I guess right now if I wanted to, I could order one off the internet and it doesn't even have to go to an FFL. It can come right to my house. Um, but yeah, there's uh, some requirements you have to meet. You have to be a member of a... Uh, organization that they tell you about like I had to join the Grand Collectors Association and you have to how's this work you, you either have to have a concealed carry permit or you have to take part in a uh, competition shooting and then you also have to be like a US citizen you have to be able to buy a firearm and all that kind of stuff and once you meet those requirements you know you can buy an M1 rifle so yeah there it is there's my M1 uh, yeah, I haven't shot it in a while, so I'm going to have to take it out and do a range video on it. And there's the ammo that I shoot. It's pretty nice stuff. And that's really it for now, guys. Alright, I'll see you later.